This episode is proudly brought to you by the boys at Sea Addicts Boats Australia. First of all, I want to say how frustrating is filming. <laughs> Almost from the moment I start filming it, I get frustrated. First of all, we went to put the GoPro up, didn't have the little screwy thing that holds it in our thingy. So I had to stop, pull over, go through my um, dive bag, get it off my goggles says put it in then we tried to put the gopro up between the uh rear vision mirror on the clamp thing doesn't fit in properly and then the little every time i went to film the little forex man comes down <laughs> every time i start to film forex man comes down so forex man got taken off very frustrating <laughs> eh? <laughs> anyway welcome back to another episode This one, well, we're about six and a half hours north of Brisbane in a little town called Agnes Water again. Well, we're about 15, 11 minutes out of Agnes now. Um, and yep, this time we are going out to the reef fishing, uh, which it's been ages, eh? Last time we went was the only time says he's been up here and she caught this monster red emperor as her first ever red emperor that she's caught. So, also, Dad's coming with us, haven't been for fish with my dad in a long time, so pretty excited. And we're meeting a couple of the boys up here at the ramp in the morning and uh, gonna jump in the water with them and do half a day spearing tomorrow while Sez and Dad have a fish. Gonna have a little comp with them. Uh, so yeah, oh, one, oh, there's a big boat in the rear view. So we haven't got our boat with us today because we had an offer from a mate that lives up here to take out his boat, it's an eight metre Patriot. It's an absolute weapon. It runs the same electrics as my boat does. Um, and there's a little bit of rain around tomorrow and that sort of makes it a little bit difficult in our boat to sleep. So we're mad not taking him up on that offer, hey? Yeah. So yeah, big thank you to you, Andy, if you're watching this, uh, we're super excited. So what I'll first do is, it's been a long time since I've come up here and gone out through the bar um, and we're leaving in the dark tomorrow morning. One thing we've got on our side is it's high tide, so it should be good, but the bar now it used to, it used to run pretty much straight out. Now it dog legs to the north quite a bit. So we're gonna go up, have a little bit of a sticky beak, how that's looking. We're gonna go and have a look at my old man's property because there's some big sheds gone up there now and Last time we were there was two months ago, camping at um, New Year's. So then we'll go back, help Andy pack the boat, and we're gonna go for a pub meal, have a couple of beers, get up at Sparrow's Fart, and we're gonna punch it straight out. So yeah, I'm looking forward to a bit of a more relaxed trip than what we usually do up here. Why is it relaxed compared to what Well, because should... usually it's like get up here at 11 o'clock at night, uh, punch <laughs> three hours out to the reef, yeah. get there by daybreak, fish all day, yeah. sleep, Fish all day again, sleep, fish half a day, come back, drive seven hours home, deliriously tired. Looking forward to, yeah, a um, good little trip. So we're staying at Andy's shed tonight, staying out the boat tomorrow night, get back, clean up the boat, stay at Dad's property in Sylvie, in the rooftop, and then head back on Sunday. So stick with us, this one's gonna be a bloody cracker, I reckon. What did I miss? And I watched that episode. <laughs> oh yeah, just past Middle Creek. Let's watch that episode. Put it right here. Alrighty, so we're up the top of the headland here. And if you look past me just there, you've got a starboard and port buoy sitting in the channel. So you come out through the 1770 channel here. And then what you've got to do is obviously go between them. But now you can see the waves breaking in front. So on a low tide, that's not where you want to be. So that channel dog legs to the north now. So coming up here is giving us a little bit of a idea what way to go in the morning so have a look through there says that's your port and the starboard beacon over here behind that tree <laughs> can't oh, wait have a look haven't zoomed in so close have a look how nice it is out there To the boat we're gonna to go to Andy's now load up the boat get everything ready for tomorrow out of respect for Andy and his place we don't do any filming there 
Shame about the conditions. A bit, uh, bit rainy. Bit rainy. Oh, that's the po-po show. That's the po-po show. Hey, boys. Keeping everything safe. Alright. Let's get this boat ready. All good. Oh, good morning. Four o'clock in the morning and we are in the water at 1770 and we're about to punch it out through the bar in the dark. It looks pretty good. Two knots at Rundle Island and four knots out at Heron Island. So it should be a beautiful ride out there. Got me helper, got the fish slayer. She's ready to go. That's me. Got some Suzuki's behind us this time. Stack the rods up. Dad's parking the car. And I tell you what, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, we got trout to catch. Right. Yeah, we're fishing the traditional way, like a real man. Like a what? Real man. <laughs> Look at all the gar. We're out here uh, at the reef now, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's not too often where you can um, sit on sort of 28 knots the whole way out and have a glass out, but we're out here now. Says he's just uh, got a little cod. I'm gonna show you something. Have a look at this fella's shirt. Oh, jeez, it might be real. Always lucky. That's me. <laughs> we'll see. So the boys are on their way out. Um, they misjudged where the servos were and couldn't find anything open till five o'clock. So they're about an hour behind us. We're gonna have a quick fish, see if we can um, get a head start. Then I'm gonna jump in the water spearing with them for a few hours and have a comp with Sez and Dad. Whoever gets the most trout, me Not on the spear or those two combined on the rod. My tips with them since I've only ever um, speared one trout before even... and I forgot my gun, so I've got to... <laughs> <laughs> Who does that? Seriously. Yeah, so anyway, I've got to borrow a gun off the boys. Bye. <laughs> How deep are we? I don't know. Oh, Quick boat cool swap. Things. Jumped in Pete's boat now. Says and Dad are over there fishing. And she's said she's radioed and said there's a seven foot bull shark under their boat taking their baits. <laughs> We'll go sort it out for Big bully under there, boat, so that's good. Well, guys, unfortunately on this trip, this is the poor visibility that we had compared to a previous trip that the boys did, as you can see here. Absolutely pristine, crystal clear blue water. But this is what we had to work with, so that's exactly what we did. We got to work. Here's Mickey taking his first drop of the day. A beautiful coral trout, and to me, these fish are the top three eating in the ocean. Now here, Joshy makes a dive and spears a really good trout. The trout takes him down around the coral and gets all tangled up and here's a good case how spear fishermen work together. Mickey dives down to free up the trout. Now once Mick's been down there for a bit you'll see Josh start to descend and help Mick as Mick comes up. All while third diver is in the water keeping an eye on both the fellas. And then it was my go. 
I'd only ever speared one trout a long time ago, but this fella, he was just asking for it. I tried to be patient, and I knew he'd give me a shot. I was pretty stoked with my second ever coral trout. See over the back of Pete's shoulder here, a really big Queensland groper, what an awesome fish. And what happened next, I don't think anybody seen coming, especially not me. I started to breathe up on the top of the surface when I seen a tail that looked all too familiar. I couldn't believe my eyes, so I made a drop down to confirm that I'd spotted a big bluey. Too excited to push the GoPro button to start recording, I missed me spearing it. But here's Pete putting a holding shot through it because my spear didn't go the whole way through. I was lucky he didn't get away. But here you go guys, an absolute horse bluey for my first ever speared blue bone. Here's Mickey going down to retrieve Pete's trout that got stuck on another bit of coral. When he sees another coral trout to his left here. He frees up the trout and he wakes up a little bit when he knows there's another one off to his right. He has a look at that one and notices another one off to his left here. What a great little bommy. Heaps of life on it. So he decides to chase this one over to the right. How that spear missed, I'll never know. But anyway, that fella got to swim another day. Well, with all the commotion, these big fellas were never gonna be far away. Red throat. Ooh, look out. Could be a little red by the looks of that. Oh no, it's a good red throat. Foul hooked. Look trouty. Looks trouty. Oh. Yeah. I thought so. 
Oh. Don't they? Hey, that is a good red throat. You got. Oh, good trout. Oh, bloody good trout. What does that shirt say? Always lucky, mate. <laughs> <laughs> They're smacking the trout. Coronations, bloody trout everywhere. Dad's got another trout there to the tally. Good size. It'd uh, blow a dog off a chain out here at the moment, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Hold on to your hats. Fishing in about 18 metres uh, just off the reef there. It's too choppy to go out wide. Hopefully our microphones are working. <laughs> As he's onto our good fish here. Sounded trouty. What do you got? <laughs> what is it? Where's the colour? Oh, it yeah, looks it's trouty. A trout. It's a good trout. It's a good trout. Oh, <laughs> that's a trout. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, hang on. <laughs> nah, that wouldn't be yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, oh. Okay. Okay, I couldn't grab the camera quick enough, but straight after that one before, says he's got another really nice trout. Look at that. God, they're good. Look at them. All right, so we've literally just braved it, and um, we're heading out here. It doesn't look very rough behind me, but it's pretty bloody choppy. It'd be blowing every bit of uh, 18 to 20 knots, but it seems like it might be losing its puff. And how is that still massive alive. big pinnacle I've just come over? Uh, I'd almost think it was I'll a wreck, but uh, usually a wreck you'll see where uh, the bottom is, and when there's a wreck ah. you'll see a little bit of, you know, um, uh, softening between the wreck and the bottom, so I don't know what that is, to be honest. I think it's just a massive pinnacle, 10 metre pinnacle, just straight up, straight down. So that was going over it slowly too. So we're gonna rig up and have a drop over that. We got singular fish all the way along here. This could be interesting. All right, says he got onto something. Oh, hang on. oh, did you just drop it? I think so. Oh, damn it! It was. It. it would have been a little red. Yeah, for sure. I remember now. That little. <laughs> they do. <laughs> right, oh well, that's a good sign. That's still out. I'm just sitting in the cabin reversing up because we got a fair bit of current and wind going together here. So fingers crossed. Oh. oh no, that's the bottom. Yeah. No. no yeah. Oh. oh yeah, tomato cod. Oh well, it's been a pretty tough day after the uh, trout. We moved wide and yeah, it was just a lot of current, a lot of wind moving really quickly. So we had a bit of a look around, but we've come in close to where we're going to anchor for the night and hopefully get a bit of a red throat session going. This is already down. What's the current like? There's a fair bit. There is, is there? Yeah. Yeah. Dad's going a 10 ball on there. Yeah, if there's too much wind and current, we might try a spot lock on a couple of um, fish patches, see how that goes. So it's been working well. Oh, hang on. Oh. That's a red throat. It's already on. Maybe that was my current. <laughs> What'd you call me? <laughs> it's red throaty. Little one. That's not too bad. So what we're doing is just using the relief shading on the Garmin to find little areas like this. Just with fish on them like that. And then spot locking on them. And then hopefully the current's not too strong and we can fish it like this. What's it like? It's pretty strong. Big sinkers. Yeah. Oh, can't catch a break. I've got a lead like that on there and yeah, she's I can back see at Broomfield. It's really good when you can just get a nice slow drift here in the afternoon because you can just get a heap of red throat and trout really quickly. And some days like this you got wind and current and it just makes it really hard to do anything. What are you calling snap, it? Snap a lead done the trick. Oh, I'm calling this a bloody red throat. I always guarantee it. Yep. Sure bloody is. Yeah, he's not a bad one. There you go. On the Sun Coast Scoots, that fella. Yeah, so that's all we're doing. You get yourself a pretty good bag pretty quickly with them. 
unfortunately, but oh, Dad's about to hook up, too, I'd say. Good fish! Oh, no. Get him up. Oh, I can't, mate. Come on, mate. He's already shark. Is he? Ah! Serious? Oh, Might just be a good trout. No. <laughs> ah, you bastard. I'm going to leave you with that. Ah. You just keep him there. Yeah, I will. Thanks. It was a All fish. All right, next good fish and shark straight away. So, <laughs> that looked trouty too, eh? Hey? Oh. Jesus. <laughs> Jeez, we've lost some gear in the last two minutes. Oh, you're always lucky, so you'll get it back. Wake up, mate. Fishing the sunset, the fish really started to chew and we put together a great bag of red throat emperor. All right, so this fella here just took a bit of um, flesh bait on just a normal J-hook. <laughs> Look at the size of that squid. Big tiger. Look at the size of him. <laughs> calamari for days, eh? That's more calamari than we've caught in the bay like all yeah, like, winter, yeah. last winter. <laughs> Film over here and have a look how much room. Loose. Full double bed. <laughs> so good. And all that. Yeah. We'll see you in the morning. <laughs> We're out. Rightio guys, this is where I inform you that we had actually lost 90% of our fishing footage to a corrupt SD card on the GoPro. So much good fishing footage was lost from this video and I've pieced it together with the 10% that I had left on the GoPro and whatever else I filmed on my phone. To say we were disappointed is a bit of an understatement. We put it into the local computer shop here and they ran every program over the SD card and couldn't recover it. So without spending a lot of money on trying to get the uh, corrupted files repaired, we had to bite the bullet, but I'm pretty stoked with what come together. So on the last morning we were heading north and we come over this great little rock. Every fisherman's dream to find something like that. So we didn't waste any time and we dropped to the bottom. Dad hooked up straight away on a little red emperor, which was a really good sign that this was gonna hold some great fish. And some great fish it did hold. Next pass here says he hooked onto a solid fish. Given her a good fight the whole way to the top, she pulled up this brute of a red emperor and all we have to show for it is this photo. I wasn't long after pulling in another really good red and we started to put together a really good mixed bag of reef fish. I'm just so devastated that we lost this footage. And you guessed it, the old boy's favourite. He'd travel miles and miles to get one of these. Good old Venus tusk fish. Someone's excited. <laughs> Love these tuskies. That's a good one. Yeah. Definitely. With the esky looking super healthy, we decided to head back early. A three hour mission got pounded the whole way. Lucky that we were in an absolute weapon like this thing. It was hard to handle. All right, it is the next morning. We've cleaned all the boat up and we're, uh, we popped the rooftop up actually um, in Andy's driveway last night and had a sleep before heading home this morning. We're pretty buggered. We probably look pretty buggered. And um, yeah, so that was a bloody good trip. I think we did quite well for a day and a little bit fishing with um, the current and weather that we had, that wasn't really predicted, but um, it's uh, half the fun of it, I guess. Anyway, we're gonna head into Agnes, and grab a coffee, and we start a seven hour trek home. So thanks for watching that episode, guys. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.